with man, and he lived. We have seen this day that God does talk to men. Therefore, we know that he lives because he manifests himself and he shows us that he is real. He does talk to men. And in his word, he commands and his speech that they obey his word. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 7, the children of Israel were about to cross over. And <clears throat> they were being given instructions. Moses was passing the authority to Joshua. And they were going back and remembering the certain things. Given certain instructions as to what to do when they come into the land. And in chapter 7, he began to speak. Now, I'm here to tell you that whosoever is a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You cannot love the world and love God, too. It is impossible. As a matter of fact, the carnal-minded man, the worldly-minded man cannot understand the things of God because they're foolishness unto him. And then, then we see then that the world hated the God that we serve. And if he hated the Lord that we serve, then if you're walking like him, then they should hate you. If they didn't receive him, then they shouldn't receive you. But it's a great danger when the church allows the world to creep into it, when you as a saint of God connect yourself to the world in any form of fashion as to become a friend with it. His way of thinking, his way of looking, his way of dressing, his way of talking. It's a great danger and it's a great insult a man to receive a system that denies your God and still denies your God. I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is alive and we should give him the utmost respect even as though you have a friend that you consider your best friend or loved one and you may say to yourself, I don't want to do this because I don't want to offend them because you can turn to your left or right and you can see them. What Jesus said to Thomas, when he declared my Lord and my God, he said, you see and believe, but blessed are they that don't see and yet, yet believe. Amen. But you should still give that same respect unto the Lord, yeah. though he's not standing physically in front of you. His presence is here, and the Holy Ghost in you lets you know that he's real. Then when you begin to deal with that world, you should have enough respect to God to say, I can't do this because I don't want to offend him. Because he is alive. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. Read. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land where thou goest to possess it, and I cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Gergesites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy. He's trying to show them what to do when you get into that land. He said, when you go into the land and the nations that have to be removed, seven of them, God's number of perfection. When you come to God, allow him to perfect you. And that he's going to remove all of these nations, situations and nations that are mightier than you. God will bring you out of the world of sin and bring you into the path of righteousness. Amen. And he will help you overcome situations, trials, and tribulations and things that you could not have ever imagined to overcome. No matter what the problem is or how, how, how big it may have been to you, God said that he will help you overcome things that at one time were greater than you. But by his mighty hand, he shall bring you forth and help you to become delivered. These nations are greater than you. But he said, but the Lord shall deliver them, amen, and when he delivers them, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. These nations are stronger than you, but the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee. Then you will smite them and utterly destroy them. And the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee. In other words, he was saying this, they are mightier than you, but don't you worry about it. The battle is not just yours. I will deliver them unto you for the purpose for you to overcome and smite them. In other words, God said, when I deliver them to you, the battle's already over. All you have to do is go forth 
in the fight because I have delivered them. I have made it possible for you to overcome and I will make sure that you succeed and come out victorious. When you're going through your trials and tribulations and you're trusting in God, remember that God deals with that situation first. That's why he will not allow you to suffer more than you can bear because he knows what you can take. He knows what you can't take. And when that trial comes, it's already been delivered. All you got to do is smite it and destroy it. God has already disarmed it. They're mightier than you. They're stronger than you. But when I deliver them unto you, destroy it. Make no covenant with the world around you. You see, when you come to Christ, the things that easily beset you, the things that trouble you, the sins in your life, the things that are not right, you have to declare war on these things to get delivered. You can't clean up house a little bit and say, I'm going to leave because I'm going to leave some. Because a little left, left to hold on. You've got to completely destroy it. Once you become born again, you have to completely work on destroying the sin that is in your life. And you've got to understand, he said, make no covenant with the world. Make no promises with your sin. I feel the virtue. Get rid of it and show no mercy. Don't give any mercy. So a lot of you like to show mercy to the sins of the world. Some of you like to make a covenant with the way of the world and the way they think in the name of being nice. But there is no being nice to a devil that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Now you can show love that covers a multitude of faults. But the Bible said, if you are a friend of the world, this is not just a New Testament teaching. It's been like this from the beginning. You are the enemy of God. This is why I teach and those that are God teach, come out from among the world and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean things. He said, make no covenant and show no mercy. When you want deliverance from God, you cannot show mercy to that addiction. You cannot show mercy to that lust. You cannot show mercy to whatever that sin is or to that attitude or to that way of being that is not right. You cannot show mercy to the people around you that are trying to bring you down and pull you away from God. You can't show mercy to the demons that come to vex you. You must destroy it from the root. Make no covenant with it. Make no agreement with it. If you still make an agreement with the wild, you're bound to fall. He said, when you get into the land, and I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm reading it as it is, and I'm bringing it up today. When you get into the land, when I deliver you, make no covenant with the sin around you. Make no covenant with the things that I help you to overcome. If you declare that this is a sin unto you, and you pick it back up, the Bible says, a man that picks up and builds up the things he destroys, you are a transgressor within yourself. Show no mercy. You're too friendly with the world. Show no mercy. Make no covenant. Read. Neither shall I make marriages with them. Thy daughter shall not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following thee, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. He said, listen, and when you get that, don't marry the world. Don't make a covenant with them. Neither shall you make marriage with them. Don't let your daughters marry their sons. Don't let your sons marry their daughters. Amen. Because what's going to happen? So what we do with the spirit of deception when you're talking to a man and interested in people that are not saved, the first question that I ask, are they Christian or are they saved? And then many people say they say they are, saying they are don't mean they are. Come on now. And then you think to yourself that praise God, you can go and join yourself to them as they are, you're going to win them to Christ. But that's not what the book says. Make it right. When you go and you join yourself to an unbeliever, and then you call yourself wanting to marry a love and unbeliever that is not saved, and you try to join yourself, uh -huh. you're stepping on that turf. They're in control. You're not. That. Because your Bible tells you not to do it. That's right. And the minute you join, you open up a door. And the reason why God said because they will cause them to turn away from serving me. Yes, sir. Read that. 
Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter, daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following thee, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee. Now you understand son. when you come up in here and you say you're born again. Or backsliders come and try to come back and they come back with people that are not born again. We don't acknowledge that marriage. You're trying to damn the whole house. You're trying to get God to get angry against us. Your children get out there and hook themselves to the world and they want to bring the devil in the house. No, sir. You're going to bring that harm of God against you. He said, I will be angry with you because you have joined the children unto the world. And what has happened? They have become worldly. Their children speak with two tongues, one foot in and the other foot out. In church, they look like church folk. But when church is over, they are there imitating the world because you have married the world. You have allowed it into your house. You have made a covenant with the things that are not God. Instead of realizing that God is alive and putting your foot down and destroying all the sin in your house. All the sin in your life. All the sin that comes up against you. Instead of making a covenant with God, you're lukewarm. Your frame of thinking is contaminated because you're married to the spirit of the world as though God is not alive. And the children of Israel said, we have heard the voice of God, therefore we know that he's alive. Never should you lie on God. Because he can speak and prove you wrong. You do that and they will pull your children out. They'll pull them out because they serve other gods. They're followed and being guided by other spirits. Anybody spirit that moves up on you or moves them to pull you away from the word of God, to pull you out of the holiness of God, is another God they're serving. They will turn away thy son from following me. And understand, parents, I realize now, I say to myself, any child that's gone astray, they can come home. I don't need any apology. Just get right with him. That's right. Then you'll be right. And then we see it. God said, he said this word, that they would, he didn't say, I will be angry because your children will have turned from you. That's not what he said. He said he's going to be angry because they were turning them away from serving him. What's more important than your child's happiness in matrimony is that they don't turn from God. That's more important. That they stay with God. That's more important. God is angry when you join yourself to the world. Amen. And then you, you constantly compromise it, but you're not even telling them how saved you're really supposed to be. You wait until it gets all deep and when you know you got to bring it into the light, then you want to talk Jesus. And then you want everybody to receive that damnable spirit. And God gets angry. Trust me. You get out there and come back here with unsafe folk, talking about you're married, having children by them, and you expect us to sit down and let you sit there, you got another thing coming. You get down by yourself. Let the Lord be angry with you in your house. Not with everybody else because it's plain as day. Don't let your children, and that goes for all of us, don't connect. If you ain't already connected, don't connect to the outside world because they serve another God. They serve another God, amen, and they will draw you away. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars. Read. And break down their images. Read. And cut down their groves. And burn their graven images with fire. You shall stand against everything they stand for. That's against God. You shall stand against everything they stand for. That's against God. Church, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the truth. It's always been that way. 
If you got an unbeliever that don't believe and you get saved and they're not, if they be pleased to stay, let them stay. But now they want to leave because they want to serve their God. A brother, sister's not in bondage. But if they be pleased to stay, maybe you can win. But you don't become ungodly just to keep them. Amen. You don't do sinful things just to keep them. Right. Now you're going to bring the angel God upon you. And I won't take it back. You cannot love the world and love God too. You cannot walk with the world and walk with God too. You cannot think like the world and man and be a part of the Holy Ghost. It is impossible. We walk around as though God is not alive, but he is alive and he's been holding all of this. He told them, I'll come against you. And somebody said, well, that's what Bishop said. Forget Bishop. He said, I'll come against you. You better, you better have me come against you because I may miss a stumble along the way, but he ain't going to miss. He said, I feel a virtue. Understand, when you hear us preaching, come out of that world, it's not because we're trying to be mean. We're reverencing the presence of God. He's the one that gave his life and shed his blood. And then, amen, you want to side with his number one enemy? You want to hook up with somebody that damns the God that died for you and rose again? What type of person are you? Read it. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn to your fathers, have the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of the Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now he said, God chose you out of all the people. He told Israel, God chose you to be a witness. He chose you to bestow his glory upon you. Not because you were the greatest of all people, you were the smallest. He said, but because he loved you. Yes. You are sitting here right now, yes. not because you're so great. Come on, come on. Not because you're so smart and you got all the wisdom and intelligence that is. If you think you've got it going on, it ain't got nothing to do with God. But he chose us because he loved us. You are here because he loved you. Not because you're all that. Not because you're so mighty and you're so smart and you did this. That means nothing to him. I feel the virtue. Understand, swallow your pride, human beings. We're like the grass on earth. One day we're green, tomorrow we're brown. Humble your pride, people. It is God that has created us and we have not created ourselves. Understand before you let your mind go into a place it shouldn't be. That it is God that we must please. It is God that we must stand before. And he's telling the children of Israel, I chose you not because of anything you have done, but because I love you. He's chosen us not because of anything we have done, but he's chosen us because he loves us. Read. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hate him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. God is a faithful God. And those that stand against him, he's going to face you face to face. But he's a faithful God. You understand? He's a faithful God. But how faithful are you? 